What's up, guys? John Connolly here, OpalJohnSoap.com. Yup, been another, I don't know, it's only been about a week since I uploaded my last one. Not too bad for me. I'm doing all right. Doing well. Still touching my face, as you can see. <laughs> you know, uh, I got soap. I'll wash my hands. Got a bunch of people asking me for soap. They want to see me making soap. So we're going to make some soap. But first, just a couple quick updates. Yes, I cut my beard. Yes, I was bored. Uh, it has nothing to do with what's going on in the world today or anything. Just, just my boredom. You know, I haven't had hair on my head for years. And I'm used to being able to change up my facial style up until a few years ago. And this became our logo. So I wanted to go a little shorter than I would normally trim. Just, you know just to see what happens. It doesn't, summer doesn't bother me with the long beard and all that. I just wanted to change up. So I, I'm kind of digging it. So we'll see how it goes. Appreciate you guys support me with the website, uh, you know, ordering through the website, local pickup through the website, you know, curbside orders, things like that. It's been going great. Shops closed to browsing traffic, mostly through our own choice. We do do appointments if people request it, but nobody's really requesting it. I mean, they pretty much know what they want and they can see it on the website. So I appreciate all the support. Anyway, let's make some soup. I'm gonna give you the recipe. Just hang tight for that. Right now I'm gonna get into the process more than anything. Um, it's a very basic recipe, but some of the stuff you may not have at home right now, you can improvise a little, but you know, always check everything with uh, your favorite lie calculator. Sorry about the shaky hand, guys. I am holding you right now. Anyway, oh look, my old logo hanging on the bathroom wall back there. Bear with me. We're going to make some soap. Today we're going to make a barbershop soap. Got our bowl here ready with our solid oils. What I have in here is 9.3 ounces of coconut oil, 6.2 ounces of palm oil, 6.2 ounces of soy, um, soy flakes. I get a soy flake. Kind of like what you would use to make soy candles, except you want to get something with zero additives in it. You can substitute this for fully hydrogenated soy. Uh, it comes, it's sort of thick, like uh, almost like lard. But again, check everything with your lye calculator first. We're going to go ahead and melt this and then mix up our lye water. Okay, in our pitcher, we're gonna put 17 ounces by weight of, I'm just using regular tap water. And you know what, if you're a little off, it's not a big deal, guys. It's all good. There's a, there's a lot of flexibility with soap making, more than people let on. clumps in there and then to this to my 17 ounces of water I'm adding 8.5 ounces of sodium hydroxide lye Eight point five. take our handy dandy whisk mix it up keep your face out from over it the fumes the fumes ain't great, but as long as you keep your face away from it, it'll be fine. Then when I'm done mixing, I'll just set it off to the side for two reasons. One, give the fumes a chance to dissipate, and two, that'll hopefully keep me from knocking it over and making a mess. All right, put that over there. So while the oils are finishing up melting, uh, real quick, lye water sitting there. I don't worry about temperatures. Everybody seems to be all hung up on temperatures. I've got a thermometer, but I only use it for certain things and it's almost never soap. Once in a while, shave soap, maybe. But really, it's, it's not huge, guys. I melt the solid oils just until they're all melted. I will give you a temperature just for reference, but really, uh, who cares? Uh, lye water, same thing. I don't go by temperature, I kind of go by feel. Um, but more than that, 
You can see how it's kind of cloudy, but getting clearer by the second. As long as it's mostly clear, it's ready to go. The stuff's dissolved, it's gonna do its job. Most of the time, unless you're dealing with a really messed up fragrance that's really sensitive to this stuff, it's not gonna act too bad. It really isn't. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility, like I said. Also, so today, our fragrance is Barbershop. Barbershop. We made this fragrance. Now, some of it is individual components. Some of it is pre-canned, you know, crafter's choice stuff um, that's already made. But we use, we use those as individual components too to make certain scents and make it our own. And that's what you want to do. For me, traditionally a barbershop scent, and it depends. It's going to be regional. It might be a country. Everybody's going to have different memories of what a barbershop should smell like. So for me, some of it, a lot of it was the Club and Pinaud um, scent. That was used a lot in the East Coast, uh, New Jersey barbershops where I grew up. And But then there was certain other scents that kind of went with that in the room. You know, there was the old leather chairs, the leather bound chairs, whatever, upholstered chairs, the old wood from the furniture, different, the barbicides, the, the aftershaves, the shave cream, the, the pomades. Um, this one barbershop I went to as a kid, Don's Barbershop up in Jersey, up in Mount Holly. He collected hats. That's what he did. His, for years and years around the ceiling, like, like at that level, all the way around the shop, he would have hats, pith helmets, top hats, soldier hats, police hats. I mean, hats, just freaking hats. You know, the smell of all the old stuff, the smell of the old people, you know, Don wasn't that old when he was cutting my hair, but there was an old guy in there called Joe. He had a little bit of a weird smell. I don't put that in my barbershop scent. Anyway, that's it. So use your judgment, you know. For some people, there's there's lime involved. For some people, it's a menthol smell. You know, for me, it's a spicy, powdery, leathery, old wood. Look, I got a stray hair. Smell. Huh. Need some more trimming. Let's get on with our soap. Okay. All of our liquid oils are melted. You can see that, right? Temperature when it comes out. And I went a little overboard with the heat today because I'm being impatient. Again, lots of flexibility. That's today's mantra. Flexible. Be flexible. 212 degrees. Ta-da! Hot. But... Part of today's recipe. <laughs> the next component going in is canola oil, straight canola oil. We are putting in 40.5 ounces of canola in this, which will cool that down considerably. This is messy. Although it's better for me than Megan. I have the height and strength. <laughs> Megan struggles sometimes. Oh, I didn't change the scale, so that's two pounds, 8.5 ounces on my scale right now. Two pounds, 8.5. Let's get a temperature. Look at that, 171 degrees. Fly water, getting fairly clear. It's probably about halfway between clear water and what it was when I first mixed it. It's only been a couple minutes. I'm not, I'm just trust me. 184. I don't care. It's within 10 ish degrees. But again, I don't care about that. Not even a little bit. <laughs> a lot of people freak out. Oh, you're lying. Your oil's got to be within 10 degrees of each other. Yeah, I don't think so. Listen, call me lazy, whatever. Call me what you will. I don't care. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Too many people, and I love you guys. I love all of you guys. Even the ones I don't agree with, I love you. But too many people hear things, read things, see things, and take it as gospel. Well, I'm a hold my beer kind of guy. <laughs> 
and I'm not super redneck, but there is a little bit of redneck gene somewhere in there because when somebody tells me, oh, you absolutely can't do that, I'm going to try it. Don't tempt me. So all of our oils are in here and melted. I'm going to put four ounces by volume because I never crossed over on the fragrance recipes, but I already know what I can do, what I can and can't do between volume and weight. So again, depending on what fragrances and essential oils you guys are using, you're going to have to decide for yourself after researching, you know, your supplier, where you got your fragrance and stuff from, how much you can actually use in your recipe safely, because that's important. You don't want to burn people's skin. You don't want them breaking out because you got too much of something in there. I guess I'm going to leave this up on the scale when I mix it because I'm too lazy to change the camera angle. All right, let's have another one of these out ready just in case we got to wipe something up. Handy dandy spatula to help scrape out the bowl into the mold. Molds all lined, roughly a five pound mold. And I talk about that in other videos, the mold and how we, how we line it and everything. Check out the channel, maybe if I can remember, because I'm brain dead, but maybe if I can remember, I'll put a link down here uh, to the video where I talk about molds. Oils are ready. I told you all the numbers. Lye water's ready. Nope, one more thing. We currently use sodium lactate. Sodium lactate is basically just a liquid salt. I only use about an ounce in my soaps just to help them, you know, so they can come out of the mold a little sooner. I think they set up a little nicer ultimately and cure a little better, but whatever. You can use salt for sure. And that's a whole separate video, guys. That's a whole video by itself. Using salt in your lye water to help harden your bars. There is a fine line between hardening your bars and making them crumbly and weird. And they, they just, I've made salt bars before, like heavy duty salt bars. And I think they leave a funky film on your skin. I don't know. I don't, I don't particularly care for them, but hey, everybody's different. All right, wand mixer. Last video, well, one of the last videos I did, I uh, I talked about doing soap without a mixer, like you didn't need a mixer. And I still don't, but I'm gonna use it because I've got it. Hopefully you can still hear me. I like to blend my fragrances, the sodium lactate and all the oils, make sure everything's sort of even. Probably doesn't make a darn bit of difference. It's sort of like, you know, baseball players, how they're superstitious and have certain routines. This is my routine. Lye water, mostly clear. Not, you know, you don't have to do anything real drastic or special. I just do a, here, let me point that towards you. Not too slow, not too fast. It's just in there. You don't even have to have the mixer run when you pour it in. Now this is turning dark. You can see it turning sort of a brownish, beigeish color. And that's because of some of the fragrances in there. There is some vanilla in here. So it's setting up on me now. So this is about ready to pour already. It's crazy. So for me, this one is ready. I mean, really, soaping does not have to be complicated, guys. See how thick that is? And that'll continue to heat up in the mold. All by itself. In fact, I might try to take a temperature here in a second. Once I get it smoothed out a little. Again, nothing too fussy. I'm a very basic guy. I know people that like to do a lot of swirls and things like that, tons of colors, and that's cool. That's great. That's just not my thing. Um, my only goal is to make a serviceable bath soap. It's, it's more about function than form. Side of the 
hold there. Not too bad. I'm trying to get it somewhat even height wise so the bars are roughly the same when they get cut. <laughs> Sometimes it works better than others. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. That's it. That's our barbershop soap. Ta -da. Like I said, that'll continue to heat up on its own in the mold. Don't overthink it, guys. That's the bottom line. Be flexible. See the soap. Be the soap. What movie was that from? Quick. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Uh, if you want to know where I get most of my supplies and things like that, I'll try to answer the best I can. I've been trying to answer people. Um, people shoot me a lot of emails. It's kind of starting to get easier, guys, if you can do it in the comments rather than emails for right this second. Unless I come into the comment and say, hey, shoot me an email. Just trying to keep things organized between this channel and our other YouTube channel. And I will try to post that recipe and a couple other things and a link to the video with the molds. I'll try to do that too. Check out the video on the screen. You might enjoy that one too. Try to ignore this door.